Then Simon Peter drew a sword and slashed off the right ear of Malchus, the high priest's servant. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. TGIF, thank goodness it's Friday, and the weekend is upon us, right? Cosbad Village is bursting with visitors pouring in to enjoy the holiday weekend or the entire week with the kids out of school. Check out the restaurants, do a little shopping, certainly check out the beach. Maybe try some surfing, complain about the weather if it's not what they expected, or bask in it. Turn to each other and say, how can we move here? Tourists. It's Friday. Us locals, it's Friday. A few years ago, at my former temple, we were trying to plan a small fundraiser. And when I looked at the suggested date, I said, no, we can't. It's Good Friday. A fellow board member looked at me like she was trying to remember something and then asked, is it when that man died? Locals. It's Friday. Before we hurry on to Easter, we are given this day anything but good, it feels, to remember and to recognize our Lord's passion and death and what it means. Today, we remember this is when that man died. Although our Gospel readings for Sundays are arranged so that we cover Matthew, Mark, and Luke over a three-year cycle, and although the events of Jesus' passion and death are recorded in all the Gospels, it is this reading from the Gospel of John that we read every year on this day. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are synoptic Gospels, crisscross many of the same stories, sometimes nearly in the same language, emphasizing Jesus' earthly ministry, teachings, and miracles. Whereas John's purpose is stated at the end of his account when he writes, This is written so that you, that's us, will believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and in believing this, we will have life in his name. John achieves his purpose by shaping his gospel around seven signs in a particular order, specifically for the purpose of opening our eyes to belief in Jesus as the Son of God. These signs in his order of telling are familiar. Turning water into wine, healing the nobleman's son, healing the man at the pool, feeding the 5,000, walking on water, healing the man born blind, and resurrecting Lazarus from the dead. These signs and miracles are not only assembled in the Gospel as John's proof to us of Jesus as the Son of God, they were also great attention getters and crowd pleasers to those who witnessed these things and told others. John's Gospel is such a different lens. Very few miracles, no exorcisms, no parables of the Kingdom of God. It is through his lens that we remember the passion of our Lord this day. See his suffering as God's Son, God's own suffering. It is through his lens that Isaiah's prophecy of the suffering servant comes to fruition. That man who was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. That man. That's big stuff to remember this particular Friday. Despite these major differences in John's Gospel and purpose, Jesus' arrest, trial, torture, and death are covered in all four Gospels. Interestingly, the little scene where the servant gets his ear cut off is included in all four Gospels, too.
too. But where the other gospel writers tell how Jesus touched the man and healed him, John does not trouble himself with the healing part. Instead, he names names. The others do not. The swordsman is Simon Peter, our boisterous, big-hearted, all-bluster fisherman, and a really lousy swordsman, trying to deliver a death blow to the throat, missing, lopping off the man's ear instead. The wounded man comes out of the shadowy, nameless category of servant or slave with his name and rank, Malchus. In Greek, that means counselor, ruler, judge, king. This is the high priest Caiaphas's right-hand man getting his right ear severed. There are reasons for naming names as there are reasons and meanings for every word of this gospel. This episode is so much more than a healing miracle. This is the last act Jesus performs before he is brought away to be tried. Until now, it has not been Jesus' hour. It was not his hour when Mary, his mother, told Jesus about wine running out at a wedding feast. And doesn't that hour seem now so far away from this? Nor was it his hour when Jesus spoke with the Samaritan woman at the well and talked of the living water. The hour drew closer when he raised Lazarus from the dead and the crowds began to get bigger and louder. And now, this Holy Week, begun with that triumphant entry into the sacred city of the Jews. Those Greeks who approached the disciples and said, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. In that request, Jesus wants us to understand that God's Son has come as an offering of salvation to everyone, Gentiles included, no longer a Jewish God, but the Messiah who will redeem all God's people. And now, in this garden, not Eden, but Gethsemane, Jesus reaches out and restores the right ear of the right-hand man of his enemies, the Jewish authorities, his own people who are turning against him. God's final and best covenant, his salvation is not only for all of us, Jews and Gentiles who believe in him, but also for those who worked to kill him. Because those enemies who worked to kill him will have their victim today, the day that man died. But to God will be the prize, the everlasting win. His plan, the prize of our salvation, is coming to fruition in the price that is about to be paid. There cannot be Easter without this Friday. There cannot be eternal life for all of us without this one saving death. Long ago, in a very different hour, he said, love your enemies. Now, in this last hour of freedom, Jesus gives us the example of that love, heals his enemies. In this hour of ours, whether we are tourists in Christ or live in him, may we not lash out blindly as Simon Peter did. May we not shrink back from this hour as his own disciples did. When we venerate the cross, may we reach out in love to him who reached out in his last moments of freedom to heal the wounds of his enemies. May we see in his death the sign of such great love given for all of us on this very good Friday, the day that man, our Lord, died.